From the moment you enter the doors of the Science Center, there's plenty to look at and study. We chose to walk around the entry level before exploring the other floors. I really enjoyed this game exploration room. The entryway and ceiling lights really pulled me in, and I was thrilled when I saw some of the displays included game systems that I haven't seen since my childhood. Unfortunately, many of the gaming systems were not functioning properly. And while this might have been due to being abused by children in the general public, it was still quite the disappointment to walk away without playing the Sega Genesis or seeing a functioning Atari again. This was an interesting test and something I would not done before. You played two short matches, clicking a target to test your reaction time. I tried my best, but I learned that I'm a slowpoke compared to those on the leaderboard. Josh and I, we didn't stand a chance, but it was still fun to try out. This area of the science center seemed a little slack to me. I think some additional personnel to clean, entertain, and educate could make the difference in visitors' experience. I enjoyed the amphibians and skeletons they had on display, but Josh and I had noticed missing pieces and even some baby drool on some of the wooden puzzles available, and the extra human skeleton was missing a forearm. Again, this is likely abuse from the public, but still a bit of a letdown. I didn't even realize this was cotton until Josh pointed it out. Gonna go in the greenhouse. Oh, is that what that is? I thought it, I just thought it was dead. Oh. It's nice and warm in here. It's broccoli. I wish I had gotten more footage from the inside of this building. There was a ton of information about farming, and there was even a gentleman who was using some of the cotton grown there at the Science Center. He was showing how it's processed and used to make goods. Four hundred years of scientific illustration from the American Museum of Natural History. It is a flea. If I'm honest with you, this area had me extremely frustrated. There were tons of cool displays, but there were also many small children actively destroying the experience for others. We eventually just walked away without trying anything for ourselves, and I did come across this display along the hallway, which I thought was pretty cool. It's like one of those little looking finds. Look at this little snowball fight. If you do visit the Science Museum, I highly suggest buying tickets to the planetarium. It's a great chance to break away from the crowd, and there's additional information you won't have access to unless you buy a ticket. It was probably my favorite part of the trip, and it was nice to rest for a bit before returning to the action.
As we were leaving, I tried my best to get one more shot of the entrance. I was in love with the lighting and the art. Josh pointed out that my sweatshirt was glowing. This clip is so cute. The Gemini is on loan from the Smithsonian, so I actually saw this more than a decade ago when I was on a high school field trip. All these elephant carvings were made from different materials from around the world. I especially enjoyed the ones made from different crystals. There was also a display of other carvings made from varying materials, and a bronze sculpture of an Egyptian mongoose from around 600 BC. We had to walk across this overpass to get to the planetarium. It was really cool because it had speedometers along the windows and you could angle them so you could see how fast the cars were speeding by below. There were also glass windows in the floor and while I wasn't brave enough to stand on them, plenty of the children were and they would gather and stomp on top of them. Before crossing the overpass, there's an area that studies architecture. I think the best thing was that there are these foam blocks that you could play with. I enjoyed seeing families building arches only for the kiddos to smash them afterwards. Finally, we explored the dinosaurs. These large animatronic dinosaurs are actually visible as soon as you walk into the science center, but because they are front and center, this is the first area many people will go, so we decided to save this for last in hopes of avoiding the crowd. There were some fossils and information about the different errors, but the T-Rex was definitely the star of the show. Looking at it from the balcony makes you want to get up close to it, but when you get down there, you realize how massive this display truly is. Oh, and I'd like to point out the pterodactyl hanging from the ceiling. I feel like you could miss him if you're not paying attention, but my favorite dinosaur is a pterodactyl, so I definitely made sure to check him out. Thank <laughs> you. 